Thank you. Thank you. I look at our brilliant panel, and I wonder what Rudy Giuliani would have done if somebody had tried to file a stock offering which showed Camp Liberty in the way it was originally shown when the reality is what we've seen. They'd be in jail so fast for stock fraud, for violating the expectations of people. This is a scandal. This is a fraud. A fraud not involving money, but a fraud involving threats to human life. What we need immediately is a commission of inquiry to determine how this fraud was perpetrated. Who <laughs> certified? <laughs> Who approved that hellhole, that garbage dump? Who said that it met United Nations standards? Somebody is responsible for perpetrating that fraud and for getting 400 innocent people to risk their lives and their health to be exposed to that kind of trash and that kind of hazard to their health. We have to get to the bottom of this. And in my view, I'm not making these decisions, but I don't believe that anybody should be required to live under those circumstances. And unless and until the 400 that are there are moved to safe places out of Iraq where nobody can trust the Iraqi government to protect them and into safe havens no one else should be required to move from the safety and beauty, self-made, beautifully built residences and schools and athletic facilities and other facilities at Camp Ashraf to this horrible, horrible place. Look, if it's truly a transit camp, if it truly is designed to keep people for a couple of days until they are moved to safer places, one could understand, perhaps even justify that. But if this is to be a place where people are expected to live, my God, what kind of humanity would compel people who are protected individuals under the United Nations, to whom the United States made a sacred promise to make this their home? This is not a home. This is not something that people should be required to live in. But let me tell you what is going on, and it's much more serious than that because I'm on the phone repeatedly with people from the State Department and from the United Nations, and we know that they are blaming the victims. They are blaming the victims. They are issuing reports saying, well, it was the victims who threw the garbage. It was the victims who turned on the water and used up the water spouts. It was the victims who made this place unlivable. That is the oldest excuse in the world. Look at what they built in Camp Ashraf when they had an opportunity to create and to build and look at what was been given to them. Don't blame the victims. We have two emergencies now. We have the emergency, the existing emergency of the facility itself. But we also have the continuing humanitarian emergency. We have seen what the Iraqis are prepared to do. And now that Iraq has become basically a wholly owned subsidiary of Iran, now that Malachi is taking orders from the mullahs, we know what the mullahs would do with these residents if they could get their hands on them. There is just no basis for continuing trust. Genocides that have been committed in Rwanda and Darfur, we look at what's going on in Syria, we say we can't do anything, and then we'll moan and groan after it's all over. We'll look to hold people responsible. We'll take some people and bring them in front of the International Criminal Court for trial. But this is an opportunity to prevent the humanitarian disaster. How rarely in life do we get that opportunity? As I've said to you before, both the Talmud and the Quran say that he who saves a single human life, it is as if they have saved the world. We have an opportunity to save more than 3,000 human lives. We cannot fail. We must keep up the pressure. And there are those in the government who have criticized us for putting pressure on them. Pressure is the weapon of democracy. That's what democracy is all about. So keep up the pressure, and thank you very much.